Hey everybody, welcome to the program, WRSA Radio. I am your host, Grenadier One. As always, I hope you're having a good week. Uh, guys, this is going to be a quick episode because I am very pressed for time this week, but I wanted to get something out. Um, I mentioned on Gab uh, earlier uh, this week, I think Monday, that uh, it's been a very busy week. It was going to be a very busy week at, at, at work for me. And I didn't know if I'd be able to to put a show out. So, um, it, you know, it's just one of those things. I, I have to keep the lights on. And unfortunately, I don't have enough subscribers to even think about monetization on the channel uh, to help kind of offset the time. So, you know, when it comes to prioritization, I have to, I got to keep that in mind. Got to got to do that calculus, you know. So, uh, but, you know, not that I, I see that change in any time in the near future or anything. And not that I'm complaining or anything. I, I do this because... I want to, not because it pays me anything. <laughs> so anyway, uh, this week we had the big topic of the pending or potential arrest of former President Donald Trump. Um, last week there was a leak of information to the Trump camp, uh, apparently, from uh, the prosecutor in New York City, or in, in Manhattan. Uh, a grand jury has been sitting, hearing the case that uh, this DA has been trying to lay out against Trump. And the word was that they were going to hand down an indictment uh, on Tuesday of this week. And Trump was told that he would likely be arrested. I I, I was kind of skeptical of that um, just because of the logistics of it. You know, how do you have people in place to do an arrest before... The grand jury hands down the indictment and, you know, there would be marshals, there would be coordination with the Secret Service. It just didn't really seem very likely, but you never know. You don't know what these uh, what these people have been doing. So um, and of course, this this immediately hit the fan. OK, conservatives blasted this as a nonsense case and a malicious prosecution, which it is. Uh, the outrage went all the way to the top of Republican leadership in Congress, uh, with a House committee issuing a call for the DA to appear before Congress, uh, actually today, Thursday, uh, to answer the charges of this being malicious and if this prosecution was spending federal money uh, to, to go about it. Uh, well, Tuesday came and went, and nothing happened, at least in terms of an arrest. In fact, the, the grand jury has actually failed to actually even meet and hand down an indictment. Um, they, they didn't even sit. Uh, and the rumor was that, well, the, the charges will come out next week. The, DA, the, the grand jury will convene next week, and they'll hand this out. So the DA has postponed these this pending arrest. Now, this, of course, was disappointing to the progressive little commies who just could barely contain their excitement that Trump was going to be perp-walked in handcuffs. And make no mistake, that is the, the entire purpose of this entire production. Uh, this is political optics. It's a political operation from top to bottom. In fact, I, I think the whole thing was was really a trial balloon to see how the public would react to it. Well, the public was not exactly happy about it or didn't bother to actually pay any attention to it. You know, supporters of Trump were galvanized and the haters were, you know, about to cream themselves, with, which is exactly as you would expect it to be. In other words, it didn't move the needle at all. It, it, it did nothing to change the mind of anyone, at least in the terms of whether you supported a Republican or Democrat. You know, it was... It, the, the camps basically stayed as they were. It may have moved some people into the Trump camp who might otherwise have considered supporting DeSantis, maybe, uh, but there's not really any data to show things one way or the other yet on that. It's just more some anecdotal stories, things that you know people were saying on, on the old internet, but uh, it appears the DA is backing off this thing a little bit. Uh, word came out also from an actual witness who testified to the grand jury uh, that the the witness that the case depends on, that the DA is depending on and resting everything on, is uh, Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen. And this witness testified how just utterly unreliable that, that Cohen is. Uh, and apparently this witness also testified that the DA was withholding 
significant amounts of evidence that exonerates President Trump. In fact, a letter surfaced uh, that basically just says just that. It has been submitted, uh, or it had been submitted back during the original effort uh, on this case. This is a case that goes back some time that others had looked at and dropped. The federal prosecutors had uh, been looking at this case, and they got this letter, and uh, it, it appears to be that it was uh, pretty significant in, in convincing them to drop the charges. And now, this all stems from the payout that Trump made to adult film star Stormy Daniels. Uh, see, the thing is, is hush money is not illegal. Paying people to shut up and not go public with their story, it, it happens every day of the week, uh, especially when the story is very weak. You know, there's, it's a, it's a, one person says this, one person says that, there's no evidence one way or the other really to support it really one way or the other. And somebody says, Hey, look, uh, if you don't, if you don't do something for me here, I'm going to go out to the media uh, and and put this story out there. And so they, they sign an NDA agreement and they get paid. And Stormy Daniels did that. And then she wanted to violate it. <laughs> and so, uh, but Daniels herself admitted that she was fabricating this, this story. And, and her attorney, uh, Avenetti, is currently in jail. Uh, and Cohen is a horrible witness. This whole thing is a sham, and everyone knows that. There, there is no crime here. It's a tortured legal theory that has never been even thought about with any other candidate, okay, with any other person seeking political office or who's ran for political office. In fact, the, you know, the standard that's being utilized here, this, this is about um, campaign financing. It's a very very stretched, abused uh, uh, statute for campaign financing. There are people that have done far, far worse uh, from a campaign financing standpoint who have faced no charges at all. And, and it was pointed out that, you know, Hillary Clinton paid for the Steele dossier as opposition research with her campaign financing and didn't report it. And she just quietly paid a fine and moved on. And, you know, when you say, well, between, you know, this person and the, you're, you're not equally applying the law here. But let's take Donald Trump out of this for a second. Let's just assume that this is candidate X. doesn't matter who. I, I believe that people should be held to account for wrongdoings. And I have no issue with prosecuting prior serving government officials, including presidents uh, or, or people campaigning for office. But there are, however, limits to that. You, you cross into wrongdoing of your own when you weaponize the legal system to go after political opposition. Regardless of what you think of Trump or even Obama or Hillary, for that matter, unless the case is legit, there's nothing that should be done. This is, this is fabricated nonsense. And the message that it sends is that, you know, that, that's the other part of this. Uh, what it says is that we will spare no expense or effort to go after someone that is our opponent. And, and, and this is a critical point. We will leave actual criminal activity committed by the establishment politicians unrecognized and unpunished. This is just another phase in the war that includes the J6 prosecutions and the big tech censorship and all of the other aspects of this. It's full spectrum dominance being unleashed upon us, being unleashed upon those who do not bow down to the altar of wokeness and uh, communist ideology. Now, I don't think the, you know, protesting is going to do much. There was some calls for people to go out and hit the streets and and protest about this, but uh, if people, you know, people go out there and show support for Trump, maybe maybe it'll deter the this prosecution. But it's not going to stop the war. People can do what they think is is necessary here, but uh, you know that that's that's not for me. I'm not I'm not going to go out to the streets to 
support Donald Trump. Um, the DA, by the way, decided that he didn't have to show up to Congress, so we shall see if there is a subpoena issued, which will have much more teeth to it. There, This was just a request for him to appear, uh, which, you know, hey, he just brushed that off. And if they, if they issue a subpoena, that'll tell us what the establishment Republicans think about this and how far they're willing to go to fight this. I, I think the way that Ron DeSantis responded to this tells us all that we need to know about that. He, he can't be bothered with it. He has to go, you know, hit the campaign trail with, with Yeb. Uh, it's just, you know, it's part and parcel for the whole, the whole thing. They hate you just as much as the left does, and they will be more than happy for you to go out in the streets and get arrested on your own bogus charges. So keep that in mind if you're thinking about going out there uh, to do anything. Uh, if you are, behave yourself. Don't give them any excuse anything that they can even stretch into a charge against you. Now, as I said, it's a short one today, so that's all I got time for this week. Like and subscribe. Uh, by the way, share the channel, please, with your, your friends. Maybe help me out boosting the subscribers a little bit. I have to get to a thousand subscribers before that YouTube will do any monetization, so uh, still pretty far from that. So uh, help a brother out and, and share the channel. Come see us over on Gab and the Mothership, and I will see you on the next episode.